The standard startup files for FreeDOS are fdconfig.sys and fdauto, and they do a lot of work for you to set up FreeDOS. Like they do things like loading the CD-ROM driver so you can use a CD as drive D. They set up the network if you did a full install, things like that. But if you wanted to uh, create a custom system where you roll your own fdconfig.sys and fdauto.bat, how, how would you do that? So let's modify this FreeDOS system to use a very tiny uh, fdconfig.sys and fdauto.bat just to see how it works. Now I should mention, I'm gonna end up with a, a very minimal system startup here. <laughs> so I'm I'm not gonna have you know CD-ROM support or things like that when I'm done. Uh, so this is just a demo and I'm totally okay with that. But be careful if you're gonna do exactly these steps in your own system. You're gonna end up with a, a, a FreeDOS that isn't quite working the way that it used to. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first dramatic step of deleting my startup files. And I hate deleting things uh, really what if I don't have to. So I'm gonna create a new directory here uh, called temp. And I'm going to move the fdauto.bat uh, and the fdconfig.sys files into the temp directory. And so there it is. I've moved to the temp directory. And now if I do a directory, they're not there. Uh, and uh, let's let's reboot and we'll see that the system comes up, but it doesn't really do anything. So let's do a reboot here. Just to remind ourselves uh, what it's doing. So what it's doing is FreeDOS is looking for fdconfig.sys, doesn't find it. So it's actually looking for another file called config.sys. It can't find it. And so then it's gonna use some defaults. And the default is it's gonna use the shell at the root of the system, which is uh, C colon, and uh, it's gonna look for uh, command.com. And so those are the defaults. And command.com, when it starts up, it's gonna look for a file called autoexec.bat, unless you're told to use something else. And if it can't find that, it's gonna prompt you for the date and the time. And that's why we're getting here a prompt for the date and the time. And I just hit enter and just accept those. And so I've got a certain number of internal commands. I mean, I can run things like dir and things like that, um, but I can't actually edit anything. Like if I wanted to edit uh, a new fdconfig.sys file, uh, edit doesn't exist. It doesn't know where to find edit. So the reason it can run some programs and not others is because there's a certain set of programs that are called internal commands. So that's things like, uh, you know, dir and, uh, RM or, 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 or remdir, uh, you know, things like that. So you can actually do a little bit of navigating CD, dir, uh, you know, so you can sort of navigate around the system, do a couple of basic, uh, simple things, but the larger programs like edit, they're, they're, they're programs. And so to do that, uh, I first need to set an environment. So I actually don't have much of an environment right now. If I just type set, you can say I don't really have an environment. My path is just dot It's the current directory. So if I wanted to change my path so I can run, for example, edit, let's go and do that real quick. Uh, path, and then it's C colon uh, FreeDOS uh, bin. And now I can edit a new file called uh, ftconfig.sys. Now, you don't need much in ftconfig.sys. Uh, minimally, I'd recommend you start with a shell equals line, and that tells DOS that it's going to use this program as the uh, command interpreter called the command shell. And uh, by default, it's going to look for that at C colon, but we actually have a copy of that as well in the uh, FreeDOS directory under bin as command.com. And so if we wanted to use that one, we could. We actually have basically two copies in the system. Uh, some people also like to set some stuff for performance, and so they'll set the number of uh, buffers that uh, DOS can use by setting, uh, oops, buffers equals, uh, let's say, 20, and, uh, and the number of files I can have open at one time is maybe 40, things like that. So you'll see buffers and files in most uh, config sys files. But here I'm just going to have a very simple fdconfig.sys file that has uh, these three lines in it. So I'll go ahead and, and save this. And so now I've got my uh, fdconfig.sys file. Now, if I reboot, well, actually, there's no reboot command right now because uh, reboot is actually an alias. And so it's actually uh, the program fdapm 
with an option in it that's going to make it do a cold boot. So that's going to do here. And the kernel starts up. It looks for fdconfig sys, found it, and uh, fdconfig sys told the system what it was going to use for its uh, shell, and that's why it loaded uh, freecom. And we can now uh, edit fdconfig sys one more time to tell it to use to tell uh, freecom to use a specific startup file. So let's uh, edit uh, fdconfig.sys. Now this command won't work because again, I don't have a path. So let's set our path real quick. C colon uh, free dos bin. And now we'll edit fdconfig.sys. So there's a couple of options you can add on the shell line. Specifically, there are options to command com or free com. Uh, the first one is to a directory that tell that uh, where, uh, where where freecom exists, and so uh, we're going to give it the path of c colon uh, free dos uh, bin, and then I can give it an option of slash p, and that tells freecom that you are a permanent shell; it can never exit. And the option to that is the startup file that it wants to use, and so I'm going to say uh, c colon backslash uh, fd auto dot bat. And so now if I exit this, now I've made that change. Now let's go ahead and, and create an FD auto file. So I'm going to edit FD auto dot bat. And when I boot the system every time, I don't want to have to, you know, rerun that path command. So let's, let's make that happen. So we'll do path, uh, C colon, free dos bin. And now I don't have to run the, the path command every time. I can also do things like create an alias. And so I can do uh, alias. Um, uh, I can do if, uh, that, that reboot command equals uh, uh, fdapm slash cold boot. Uh, I can also do another alias if I wanted to make it look like a Linux system. I could do an ls command. Um, and that would be, uh, let's say, the, the dir command uh, slash uh, order by grouping directories first, uh, sorting by name and then by extension, and then uh, make it a bare directory listing so I don't get the top and the bottom stuff, make it all lowercase because that's what Unix does, and then we'll make it wide because it looks more like Unix. Uh, and so now I've got a, uh, a very simple fdauto.bat file that has, most importantly, the path command at the top here, right? That's the most important thing here. I've set a path. Uh, but I can also do some other things in there in terms of aliases. But basically, the fdauto.bat file will get read every time the system boots. And this is where I want to put anything that's going to uh, basically define how my system behaves. And that's why I have my path and any aliases I want to have. And if I have any variables I want to set, I can do that here too. And so let's go ahead and exit the program. And let's go ahead and uh, reboot. I don't have my alias set yet, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, do uh, FDAPM and do a cold boot. And now when the system starts up, the kernel starts up and it looks for config or fdconfig.sys. It found it. And then fdconfig.sys had a shell line in it that told it what shell it should be using. And that's why we're running freecom. There was an option on there that said it should use the fdauto.bat file as its startup file. And that con file contains these three commands you see up on the screen, a path command and two alias commands. So if you want to create a very custom startup uh, set of startup files, this is how you do it. Now, I've kind of broken my system because I don't have a, uh, a CD drive anymore and things like that. But if I wanted to have a very custom system, this is what I would do. It's a very uh, short uh, config sys and a very short FD auto. And uh, that is how you would modify your system. So what do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Also, uh, thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really make this channel happen, and I appreciate every one of you. Uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially for that. So thank you very much. Visit our website at freedust.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.